Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 75. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 550 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. 550. 550 subscribers. Thank you. Thank you so much Welcome. to all of the new people who have joined our channel and subscribed to us. Yes. We greatly appreciate it. If you are new, please give us a little uh, thumbs up down below. Let yeah. us know. Let us know how you found us. How did you find us? Did you did you wander in here and did you search for people that were crazy and <laughs> we came up? Speaking of crazy, how is it again that your head is like bashed in, you Mr. Crazy? You don't remember hitting me? I am not beating him. <laughs> I just want to make that clear. No, she's not beating me. Been working on the trailer. We actually got in trouble. We had it out in the driveway. We were sleeping in it. We were kind of sleeping in it in a couple nights. Because it's so fun. And uh, But like we were house. working on it. And finally, after about nine days, Code Enforcement put a little sticker on the front and said, you have 24 hours to move it. I'm Fine. Like, so we, we did pack it down. We put it on the side of the house. Yes. For a day. Mm -hmm. Then Saturday rolled around and I pulled it back out because I need to finish working on it. We complied. We did comply. But it's a good thing. We're trying to get the hang of setting it up, tearing it down, what can fit inside, what can't fit inside. Because obviously it's a camper and it folds down. And so there's only so much room we can actually fit in there when it's folded down. So... We're trying to figure out the nooks and the crannies and where can things fit and what do we have to not have in there as far as storage. Because I have a rule with Rachel, if it can't be stored in there, it can't come. So I get very creative. Yes. But it is funny. It comes to a point, though, that fitting something in is just not negotiable. Right. Like when everything is opened out and you see the entire landscape of the opened pop-up camper, you're thinking to yourself... We could fit the entire contents of our actual house into this thing. There's so much more room for activities. But as I talked about for our Patreons in this week's Fearless Friday, when you have to get it compact and see what actually fits into your pop-up camper, there's some stuff that just has to go, whether mm -hmm. you like it or not. Right. So I do want to, before we get any further in, and we'll discuss my head, but... Uh, flavor of the week this week for Keto Chow is chicken. Chicken. The chicken soup. I'm immediately Which thinking. Which makes really good drop biscuits. The drop biscuits are outstanding. It's so funny because I'm, I'm anticipating a sweet flavor. But chicken is something that is awesome. And let me tell you, stock up. For the holiday We make season. some good casseroles. There's a couple of recipes on our website uh, for casseroles with it. I will actually be bringing some of that with us on our camping trip to just be kind of mixing in to have a kind of like a gravy kind of yeah. thing. We're going to bring some of that and we're also going to bring some of the tomato basil and probably make like an open fire chili I'm since we so are going to be camping for six days. excited about that. And I don't want to miss out on all of that stuff that you can only make over an open fire. Right. It makes it special. Not only are we going camping for six days starting next Sunday, we have already booked our second camping trip, which is going to be just a week and a half later. So we're gonna come home for a week, and then we're gonna go back out the following week just for three days for Rachel's birthday. But uh, we found a place that is an Army Corps of Engineers place. Talk about a hidden gym. It is on a river, on a man, or on a canal, a man-made canal. It's pretty though. Pretty, and there's only nine campsites. We found out, here we are living in Florida for such a long time, basically my entire life. Mm -hmm. Never understood like the Army Corps of Engineers has these campsites 
all over the country. And they're either free or very cheap. And they're gorgeous. Beautiful. And they're and maintained and have restrooms. Cause that's my thing. When you first hear like, oh, it's free or really discounted, I'm like, I'm gonna have to poop outside. Right. Like that's that's what's gonna happen. That's it's okay, because I added a toilet to our camera. I'm for pooping you. outside. But I do like to have access to like a public restroom. <laughs> to be honest. So when I found out that they have some of the most well-maintained restrooms, picnic areas of all the campsites, who knew, Yeah. right? What an exciting hidden gym. And yes, I kind of asked for an experience for my birthday. My birthday is September 3rd. It's always right after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like my mom. My mom. Well, we're leaving on Labor Day. So my mom is a July 4th baby. So her parents always told her that like, you know, the fireworks were for her. And for me, it was always the beginning of school. And then we'd get this long weekend and I would always be looking at my classmates going like, you're welcome. We're getting this day off for my birthday. <laughs> it wasn't true, but it felt good. So back to my head. So we set it up yesterday. Today's Sunday when we're filming this. We set it up yesterday with my intention of just being able to finish the drapes because somehow I got talked into doing all of the sewing for the drapes and the privacy screens. I well, don't so know they how. Could, well, so they could actually be done. You could not have me do them. It would be terrible. So I have a little bit of sewing skills. Not much, a little bit. Like they're not very straight seams. I mean, everything is jagged. But I know how to make sure two things come together and hem things and that kind of stuff. You're ahead of me. So so anyway, we put it up. And then I said to Rachel last night, I go into the bedroom like at 9 o'clock because I set it up at night. And I said, hey, it's up if you want. And she's like, well, then I'm sleeping in that I'm thing. I'm sleeping in that thing. So we go out. We turn on the air conditioning. We wake up this morning and we notice... Um, there was a leak in an area that we did not know about. So I am re-repairing a section of the roof that needs to be fixed. And it's super frustrating. It's because you, you spent all this time doing this and now heart, you have to redo something. Your heart sort of sinks because mm -hmm. you're like, I thought we were done and I thought we were moving on to the next thing. And I thought, man, it's Sunday when we're taping this. And I'm like, that'll preach because how many times during our keto journey have you thought to yourself, I've got this fixed. I've okay. got this area of my life repaired, fixed, and I can move on to tightening up, right? To right. toning this keto journey. And it's like, nope, I got to tear the roof back off that thing and rip out what didn't dry out and fix it and repair it again. And Joe's first response was like, I, I failed in this area. Like he felt really badly mm -hmm. about it. But it's like, don't feel bad. Do not feel like a failure. You know what's a failure? Leaving it to, to fall apart entirely. Right. Going back to the drawing board and ripping it apart, you're sealing it right, you've learned something new, and, and it's not over. Like I think that that was a victory, honestly, that we didn't just leave it to fall apart. We're fixing it, we're repairing it. And, you know, we are, you're three years into this keto thing. Yep. I'm two and a half years into this keto thing. And there's still times where we have to rip the roof off that thing again and repair it. But I got to say, oh, I dropped, dropped my dimes. But I'm still doing so well one day at a time with this. How are you doing? I am doing awesome. I'm down another two pounds. I'm almost, 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 almost at in back into the 180s. I'm at like wow. 191, uh, which I'm super happy about. And again, that is something where, yeah, so having been doing keto for three years, yeah. And never having a time over the three years of having weight go up. I mean, I've had things where it goes up a couple of pounds, like, you know, overeating at holidays, things like that. But again, yeah. in three years, never had a cheat meal. Never had a day where I said, I'm going to eat a whole bunch of carbs. You know, maybe I overdid a few of like keto carbs, but I mean, not, I'm not even, I'm talking about like a dessert day and having 40 total carbs kind of thing. But I've never had a day where I'm going to eat bread or I'm going to eat some cakes or some real sugar or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it was very frustrating to see that scale go all the way up to 200 pounds. And there were plenty of times where I looked at Rachel and I'm like, what the heck am I doing wrong? Because yeah. I know I'm not eating too much. I know that I'm, you know, like I'm not eating a bunch of carbs. I know that I'm really not even eating a bunch of keto treats. I mean, you see us review things. 
a lot of times that's the only time we even eat that stuff. It's yeah. like, I have like piles of like perfect keto cookies. If I have one of those cookies, it's like it's a, once a month. It's a legitimate treat. Yeah, it really is. So it's not like I'm eating that kind of stuff very often. And I don't even put sweetener in my coffee. And so I was like, what is going on? And I know in the end that 99% of it was stress, like especially between the COVID and everything else, and lack of sleep. And then all of that leads to me snacking throughout the day. So I wasn't having a decent amount of like even like four or five hours in between eating. It was like every couple hours, 50 calories here or 100 calories here, never giving your body a chance to get to that fat. But there were a lot, I had to sit down and reevaluate. Okay, where do we have to start over again? Do we have to go back to this? Do we have to go back to that? What do we need to do? What do we need to change? And that is just something that, you know, you, we started thinking about with having to redo a part of the trailer that we just spent two weeks on. Every once in a while, you have to reevaluate your diet, reevaluate the way you're eating. Go, instead of quitting, right. reevaluate. Exactly. And I think handling things one day at a time, because I let things unravel one day at a time too. Mm -hmm. I mean, just Anthony and I were laughing this morning about how me and a friend of mine who, who lives here locally had decided we're going to work out every morning this summer. <laughs> That lasted two days. It, it lasted one day. Oh, it was we, one day. We worked out really hard. And then the next day, because it was a summer plan, we saw it as like a summer horizon. That's a long, you know, amount of time. Right. And so it were like, well, the next day we would say, okay, this came up. But it's okay because we have the whole summer to work out. So right. if we let it go today, it's no big deal. So then the next day, oh, something came up for you yesterday. Well, something came up for me today but it's okay because we've got the whole summer to do this and that's exactly one day at a time that we let our plans unravel so one day at a time is how you tighten it up and definitely in different seasons i struggle with different things once the you know uh fall comes in it's the the fall foods that i want to overindulge in come mm -hmm. back in too and i ha i'm going to have to take this one day at a time and say hey maybe i don't want a bunch of walnuts during the summer but when i start smelling the candles and the and i start seeing the things come up on pinterest that are using walnuts now again my my attention has to go to that particular nut today or that right. particular treat and rein it in but in the 24 hour cycle right so let's talk about food that we're gonna have yes. real quick because that's what we're gonna do this week. And then we'll get onto our regular food and things, but we're going to be going to Costco this week. So I think we're gonna have a Costco haul because we have to go get food to go camping. Yeah, I mean, we've been eating a lot out of our freezer and kind of depleting those resources, but we were looking for um, easy grab and go stuff. Obviously we want hamburgers. Obviously we want some hot dogs. I will say- We are getting spam. That we are getting spam. We're getting Vienna sausages. I didn't say I didn't agree to Vienna sausages. Oh, they're coming, baby. Um, I did see that Christopher uh, Slapstick had said uh, had showed us where somebody had rolled in um, pork rinds. Mm -hmm. They had battered a, a spam. Yep. And I was like, Have you seen anything for Vienna sausages, or do people just you know throw those directly into the trash? Yeah. So we're gonna make everything simple. We were gonna we're gonna bring some ground beef because we are we do want to make like an open pot cast iron pot chili like yes. while we're camping. But a lot of it's gonna be just burgers, hot dogs, sausages, spam. But let us know down in the comment section if you're a camper. What kind of food, keto food, do you bring camping? We're obviously going to bring some pork rinds. We're going to bring some keto bricks. Yes. Which, by the way, if you saw the video, I will leave a link over Rachel's head of that new flavor. I believe it sold out like almost immediately. Really? So I'm sorry if you weren't able to get one. You can check back or message Robert saying like, hey, I didn't we get any. Some. Can you make some more? When are you going to make them again? But yeah, we'll bring some keto bricks with us just because that's a good thing. Like, hey, you don't want to cook. You know, you've been out all day. You can eat a piece of a keto brick. We're going to hike. We're going to hike because there's like miles and miles of hiking so there. That there's is, bears. So that is way easier to bring in your knapsack mm -hmm. than bringing a whole meal. Yeah. With like all the plates and stuff like that. But 
I am very. We are bringing our kayak. I I'm so excited about that. Yeah, and like just we can put a little um, cooler thing. A yeah, we have a backpack cooler, but I mean it's funny because we have a kayak, and we're I'm I'm actually thinking about trying to sell our kayak and It'll getting look- a tandem one because we have a single one, and then we're gonna have to borrow one from somebody for. The other person. I am very excited of the prospect of you doing the majority of the paddling instead of me being in my own kayak and having to well, do first the we paddling. have to find a tandem one. First we have to sell the one we have. I do do better though with like a kayak than I do like a paddle boat. I feel like paddle boats are a terrible have idea. Any, have any of you guys ever gone paddle boating with somebody and then you do all of the paddling? I remember we did it once with the kids and I'm like, never, never again. We, like, again. we went to Disney World. We weren't on Disney property, but we were staying in another place that had the paddle boats and they were free for the residents. And we're like, hey, we'll take you guys out in the paddle boat. And they all wanted to go. Oh, yeah. And none of them, There's- none of them, all three of them sat there. What do you mean we have to paddle? I'm always in the wrong shoes, too. If you have to paddle and you have to do the paddle thing, it seems like my flip-flop gets caught on the pedal, and it's a hot mess. Let's get into some more of our food for this week. So Wednesday, we had like a little smorgasbord. We had burgers. Uh, yes. We had some sausage. We had a steak. We had one steak that we kind of cut up and then some eggs. I feel so victorious, though, because we're, like, cleaning out the freezer, yeah. everything. But those that sausage is the Kielbau- Kielbasa brand sausage that we got at Costco. You can, well, you can get it at Costco, Ooh. all three stores. Costco, BJ's, and, and Whole Foods. And not Whole Foods. Well, they even sell it Garlic Foods. flavor. But the Costco, BJ's, and Sam Club all sell it. I think Sam stopped selling I think they have their own brand now. It is so tasty. But it's really good. They have a lot of different flavors. The jalapeno one is my favorite flavor. It's hard to find. That. I'm all about the garlic one. That one is so good. And I love that everything could get cooked on the Blackstone at the same time. Right. So Thursday, we had some leftover wings. We had some eggs. And then uh, we had ribs. So, you know, I've, everything has kind of been like throw together, especially because we're kind of doing OMADs right now. You know, also adding in some salads and stuff like that. You know, there, I didn't have pictures of the salad. But our salads are pretty basic. It's like lettuce and a little bit, like one stalk of celery. It's so and funny. And some radishes that have been cooked up a little bit. You know what's been funny, though, is like how I used to make a salad versus how I make a salad now. I definitely dice up the vegetables more. Um, I used to just thoughtlessly put an entire, you know, an entire onion, an entire green pepper all of these different things in it and now it's like we make the salads and they come out big but because i'm dicing them up my vegetable like groceries last for a whole week so then friday i had work during the day because i'm trying to rearrange my whole schedule because taking six days off in the middle of the summer from landscaping in south florida crazy talk is a little crazy so I'm trying to like push everything towards the end of the week so that next week is towards the end of the week and then I can just cut like on Friday and Saturday. And then, it, so it's right into the schedule. So we, I cut in the morning and then they just opened up a Gander Mountain um, up in Fort Pierce, which is about an hour and 20 minutes away from us. That was date night. And so we were gonna go on Saturday and then I said to Rachel, you know what, let's go on Friday. I'll get home from work, we'll take a shower, we'll go up, take a nice ride up. And I'm glad because there's this thing called the bowel tire, tire leveler, which is this really cool thing that will level your camper without having to drive up on blocks and things like that. And I've been looking everywhere for it in every single website. Like I checked 50 websites, everybody is sold out. Well, they just opened the store and they had one. So I'm glad that we did take a ride up there. It was really cool. It's like, hey baby, you know what's romantic? Let's go buy a gray water tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? But. We found the absolute best Texas roadhouse. Now, we've the been best. to several Texas roadhouses, the but best, this Jerry. is the second time I said to the Rachel, best. we're going to go out to eat. And so we got our normal, a 16 ounce prime rib, which was then smothered with cheese and onions and mushrooms. And then we get the horseradish sauce. Yes. And then that's a, in the back there is a double order of broccoli, which is then coated with sour cream, cheese, and bacon. I think that it is, what was it, like a $2 upcharge to smother the steak? It was, no, it was it was a dollar upcharge to smother the steak. Okay. And an 80 cent upcharge to make the double order of broccoli 
Loaded. Loaded. So, so it was twenty five ninety nine a piece for that meal, and that was it. And then we, I mean, we had water, which I I can't make a good prime rib for that because to really make a good prime rib, you need to buy a four to five pound prime rib. You can't buy it too. It's not going to come out the same. So you want to get into comments and stuff, please. Well, before we do, we do have to take a quick commercial break. Will we be back in two and two? Yeah, two and two. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, okay, so we're going to get into our subscriber of the weeks and stuff. If you are new to our channel, because we do have 550 new subscribers this week. Thank you, guys. Um, every week, we take the second half of Keto on the Couch, and this is our long, usually one of our longer uh, videos, and we like to, number one, highlight subscribers. So yeah. we have a Facebook family group. There's a link down below. It's completely free to join. And, you know, you can go in there and people are sharing recipes, helping inspire you, giving suggestions. Tips, deals. Tips, deals, coupons, things like that. And uh, we ask you to share your story because your story is going to influence somebody. There is somebody out there right now who is struggling with something that you've already beaten. And yeah. when you say like, hey, I had this issue and I got past it, they're going to be like, oh, I can do it. So please share your story over on our Facebook family group. And if you don't have Facebook, you could email us at stories at Two Crazy Ketos. So we like to highlight the stories and then we like to go through different comments from our Facebook family group, just pulling a couple of them and from last week's Keto on the Couch. So make sure you're commenting down below. And also we have a new segment here where it's just somebody who's put something up that just kind of motivates us, inspires us. And this week's is from Angela. And Angela. I'm going to actually pull it up here so that we can read it because there's a lot there. All right. So Angela wrote, I thought I had no triggers. However, I came to find I am an emotional eater. More so with negative emotions. So even though a specific food doesn't trigger me on a given day, an argument or anything that emotionally brought me down will turn me to eat more than I need. And it's not carbs. So it took me a while to figure it out. I kept hearing Dr. Sai was talking about the carb addiction. And I knew that wasn't me, but it was close enough to keep me listening. I have my keto mojo and I find it motivates me greatly. I focus on how proud I will feel when I can get to bedtime when I check my glucose and my ketones. When I st stay on track and the numbers are good, I know I will accomplish my health goals. These are no longer weight goals. I love that. I'm looking to at least improve my sags and bags and maybe even see more internal improvements with my knee and my asthma. A little victory. I just realized I haven't had any back pain since January. Wow. She said, yay. I keep myself going by remembering how proud I feel each day I am successful. That's my coin in the jar. Yeah, baby. This journey has taught me I'm emotional. So I need to keep that gauge balanced. And when I'm upset, I try to get out of the house and get a couple of miles in. I thank you for being 2KK where I can just look online and find you. One of my anchors who keeps me focused and grounded. Oh my and in gracious. case anyone was wondering, last summer I was lingering around 200 pounds. Today I'm around 120. Wow. And yes, losing weight matters, especially to your heart. Yes. But when you begin to see deeper benefits, you will be looking at different markers for success. Thank you. Wow. Awesome. So I, I think the consensus is we're calling this the Keto College. Well, I don't know. We've got a few comments about this, so oh. we're going to have to hold off on oh, that. Oh, man. I thought we had, like, decided. I don't know. We're, we're going to make a decision at the end of this episode. Well, she's the professor for today. I think that, that that is such a great change in mindset. It really is a health goal. Like, that is incredible. That's an amazing amount of weight loss. We're talking 80 pounds of weight loss. And it's exactly what we were talking about earlier, right? You have to reevaluate. You're going to have to go in and yes. go, like, hey, what are... She realized, like, hey, something's wrong. What is it? Because it's not a carb issue, right? Like, Rachel says she gets triggered when she has sweet stuff. For me, I don't have that issue. For me, I realize it's when you're bored, when you're doing nothing, when you're sitting around and just watching TV, you want to eat. Yeah, so he's definitely more of a boredom eater while I am an emotional eater like you are. So, like, yeah, just... It's okay to know yourself and to know what your triggers are and, and deal with it. And I, you don't have to be somebody like us who's like, hey, I'd like everybody to know I'm an emotional eater. Right. You don't have to do that. But it's okay to have that conversation with yourself and for you to know what it is that triggers you. Yep. 
Next one is Krista. Hey, Krista. Look at this beautiful girl. I have to say, before I even read this, Krista. I just love you. I almost didn't put this in here. I felt like I was looking at one of those scam weight loss pill things. Yes. Where they take somebody's face and they stick it on a skinny body or on a skinny body or on a fat body. And they're like, hey, six months later. I was like, there is no way this is Krista. Look at her before picture. I mean, just- Doesn't even look like the same person. Absolutely aging backwards because you look so much younger. Right. Like everything about you. So let's read what she wrote. She said, yesterday I started my fourth virtual race. Wow. The race is 90 miles and my goal is to complete it in under three weeks. These virtual challenges are keeping me motivated and moving. September 1st is my two year keto anniversary and I'm just two pounds away from my goal weight. Now it's time to make new goals. Starting weight was 198. Uh, current weight is 137. Goal weight is 135. Krista, that is absolutely amazing. And I think what a cool thing are these virtual they races. They are super cool. We need to do one of those. I, we definitely do. I, you know, it's, this is another reason why sharing your story and what you're doing is so amazing and, and helpful. I didn't even know about it. Because until you posted that, I didn't even know that was a thing. Right. I did not even know that that was something that you could join. And I've talked about, I mean, I've um, heard about different people. Like we have a friend that is a paramedic and they do like step challenges and like, you know, this type of challenge. But you have to be a part of that like workplace. Right. So I never knew that there was something that you could do with other people in different communities. I mean, I thought that was like so, so cool. We got to join one. So, okay, we got one more. And this one's from Elizabeth. Elizabeth says, we've lost a whole person between us so far. Can you see it? Aside from yes, the snake? Yes, I can. I'm actually glad that you put the snake down. Put the snake down. But you, you look amazing. You guys look Way to go. Awesome. What a gorgeous couple. Congratulations, guys. Okay, so we have a few comments from, we're going to start off with a few from YouTube from last week. Rhonda wrote. Rhonda. So we're going to talk about what we need to name that first segment. Okay, because I was kind of leaning towards Kilo So College. Rhonda said, I love Monday motivation. You guys are my motivation all the time, but mainly on Mondays. When you wish the weekend was just one extra day, you help me get through it. Aww. Thanks to KK. Rhonda, that is such a nice thing to say. I know what you mean. There's some, there's, there is, isn't there an hour on Sunday? Let us know down in the comments. What is your hour on Sunday where you start to think like, oh, it's almost Monday, <laughs> right? It's usually 10 o'clock 10 at night yeah. that you start to think like, oh my goodness. I gotta go to work tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have another one. Kristen, Kristen wrote. The weekly post y'all talk about should be called passion post. Aw, I kind of like that. <laughs> That's really sweet. I never even thought about that. But I, and I love like alliteration. I'm all about it. Got a few more. Boomer wrote, I really like the Monday motivation. It just fits what I think your channel is all about. Oh, Boomer. All right, we might have to just call it. Well, and it was definitely a Monday motivation that she was sharing. So we got a couple more. All right. Louise, Louise says, love Keto College. I learned so much from you. I learned so much from you guys. Wow. I don't know. Renee wrote, obviously I like Keto College because she came up with it. But yeah, it's all of us learning from each other. I've learned so much from you guys and my 2KK family. You guys have brought so much knowledge, so much joy to our lives. Like, thank you. We learn from you guys all the time. I know people look at it like, oh, well, they're the one with the channel. We learn from you. It's your channel. Yeah. That's why... It's so important for us to have this keto on the couch time where we talk about subscribers because you're what makes it. That's right. So Charity wrote, you guys are such an inspiration and you give motivation to stick with this low carb lifestyle. Yeah. Also, your positivity causes us not to beat ourselves up too badly and get back on plan. Ketoversity sounds better to me than keto college. Oh my gosh, just saying, ketoversity. I kind of, that's kind of like cool, right? So we have one from Bianca, uh, and she wrote, Motivational Monday has been done by other YouTubes. It's boring. Oh, okay. I like keto college. All right. Okay. That's a that's a that's a definite opinion. We're not confused on how she she feels. Yeah. Like that's that's a we know. Okay, so Gail wrote. What touching health testimonies. Wow. You guys also did such an amazing job on sprucing up your camper. What cleaning products did you use? Rachel, you go with the cooking. Wish we could have seen that Monday motivation. 
Man, I was a hot mess. Like, my eyes were puffy the next day after reading those. We have to pause for one minute. Subscribers. You, you kind of put, I think she was voting for Monday motivation, and okay. she was saying, I wish I could have seen that, meaning you cooking. Oh, would that be a motivation? <laughs> if I'm cooking, I don't know. It may set us back. Uh, cleaning products, we found this stuff. It's actually like a mildew remover. It is like, I've tried five different ones and pretty much every one of them, the base is bleach. So you yeah. have to get in there with a mask and make sure all those miracle windows are open. Something? There was a, a miracle something. I'll put a link for it down below. I, I know some people have very strong feelings about using any kind of chemicals, but when you are trying to clean up a crime scene, yeah, like we were rust, trying to clean rust up. Rust and mildew, well, it was mostly rust. We had to get in there with like the, we, the the big guns. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but I could not sleep in that. Like, I don't think that there was any combination of like aromatherapy and water that was well, going to get rid of that. We were thinking about when we first got it, like, oh, okay, we're just going to get all new canvas made, which is expensive. It's like 1200 bucks. Yeah. But once we were able, we said, let's try cleaning. And once we were able to get it clean, we're like, okay, you know, we don't need to do that right we now. We should have though taken pictures of ourselves in there cleaning it because yeah, it was such big guns that I had protective eye gear, I had a mask on, I had shields, I had gloves, like, because I am very sensitive to, like, different cleaning materials, especially if it's a mildew remover of any sort, but, like, yeah, we had to fight that. Yeah. We are going to have a video coming out of the whole transformation of just dedicated to us re renovating the camper. So that was the last one. So what are we doing? Keto College, Monday Motivation. Man, I, I still think we should go with Keto, keto college. college. So Keto College. So the first segment will be the Keto College segment. Yeah, because you guys definitely teach us. And there's always something new to learn. And I love your perspective. Yeah. Okay, so next one is from Cindy. Hey, Cindy. And she said, we are looking for a camper too. It is worth a look. And I definitely think that, you know, sometimes if you go, when we went to Gander Mountain and you see like the smallest one on their lot new was $20,000, we're like, okay, there's never going to be a time when we're going to be able to purchase that because we are of the opinion that you don't go into debt for anything. So we only purchase things that we can pay for in cash. Well, don't say we're never going to be able to have that. Because... Well, well, I'm saying that like the, your first response is you're not yeah. going to be able to. I am going to say, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but That's if okay. you, anybody who is interested in buying a used camper RV pop-up tent, I found this channel that I love to watch. It's called Playing With Sticks. And it's yes. about a couple who live in Alaska and they dedicate their channel and themselves to small trailer camping, like teardrops. They like to camp in Alaska in teardrops. Which that's amazing. Well, I'm gonna leave a link right up here over Rachel's head as well as down below. He's got a video on what to look for when, it's like 25 things of what to look for when you go buy a camper. And I wish I would have seen that video before we bought ours, but we did get ours like ridiculously cheap. We knew what we were getting ourselves yeah. into. But he tells you like how to spot water other than just like looking inside and seeing mildew, like different ways. So I'm, I'm gonna leave a link for that video because it's really good. So if you're looking for a used camper, it's a great video to watch. Cause it he really talks is. about everything with that. But it's like going back to what I was saying was, um, don't be afraid of the used camper yeah. because again, it's kind of they like depreciate. it buying a new car, you know, the fun of being the first person to drive it off the lot is going to cost you mm -hmm. like significantly. And what we definitely found, especially with the pop-up campers is they don't change that much over the years. They really don't. No. Like, I mean, they, they definitely use the same, uh, there's a difference cushions. <laughs> there's a difference between the ones built in like that we got in 2005 and the newer ones. Cause obviously over the last 20 years, technology yeah. has changed. I mean, the way they've been able to pop things out, but yeah, I mean, there's not much of a difference between a 2016, 2017, and a 2020. So just They're almost see, identical. Just to see the year and have that new tag sticker, I don't think that it is worth another $10,000. Yeah. In fact, we just watched the video about how there's never been like a model year, like, you know, in cars, like, you know, in August, all of the next year model cars right. start coming out. Well, they've never had that with campers and they are now starting that where there'll be a model year so you can compare like vendor to vendor, manufacturer to manufacturer. Yeah. 
Okay, so Anne wrote, hey, Anne. congratulations on the pop-up. Great job cleaning it up. You're looking at years of enjoyment. I am super, super excited about it. And I don't think we were ever like understanding like living in Florida, how blessed we really are that there are a lot of places, you know, just to get away looking. for the night. And yeah. sometimes just to disconnect. It's okay. Even if you just go get a, a tent. Right. And like get away from the night. Sometimes like you just need to unplug from from what's going on around you and just get back into nature, take a deep breath and and then move forward. Right. Lisa wrote, I would love to get a small pop up or pull behind camper. Growing up, my grandparents had a small po uh, pull behind. They used to take us into the mountains in Idaho and they are some of the best memories of my childhood. And I am handy and crafty and would love to get a cheap fixer upper to make memories with my granddaughter. I think it is a great idea. And we even saw that you may uh, look into your area and see, but there are a lot of um, people that are making campers yeah that's a one or two person pull behind very we lightweight found like three camper. different companies right here in florida that are making like teardrop or or box drops or what they call like where they're more of a box shape and yeah things like that. that are only like under five thousand dollars yeah like brand, brand new, new under five thousand dollars so if you're like hey i just want something you know i'm not i'm not wanting to take care of something huge i just want something i could put into my garage and close the door like I thought, wow, I didn't even know that they were around. Yeah. But if you can find one that doesn't have the, a leak, which we knew our problem going yeah. into it, but if you can find one with a good roof, I mean, everything else inside is easy. If you're at all handy changing out the cabinets, making new curtains, putting new floors in, that kind of stuff, it's a lot of fun. It is. So. Uh, next one is from Amy. She said, you will love the pop-up. We had one from 2003 to 2013. No air conditioner in our Coleman, but we live in upstate New York. Okay, big difference. We started by tenting for years, which we also loved. In 2014, we bought a small travel trailer and nice. we love it. We're in our 60s and hubby was tired of hauling coolers, getting <laughs> ice, setting up in general. Yeah. Sometimes I do miss the pop-up as I loved having all of the screening and seeing the stars from our bed. You will have many wonderful family adventures in the pop-up, and I hope to hear all about it in your videos. Amy, thank you so much for those well wishes. Like, I, I just really appreciate that. Yeah. Like, that, that you guys care about us and, you know. We're I, looking forward to it. And I look forward to you guys sharing with us some of your your tips and tricks, you know, for, for camping. If you're somebody that's RVing or camping, we would love to know what are some of your favorite things that, that you bring along on a trip? Yeah. What are some of the ways that you make your camp site cozy yeah. because we are like newbies to we're this. newbies to this I, yeah. I am i'm a veteran camper again grew up a boy scout grew up camping every single weekend of my childhood all the way until i got married i was camping every single weekend with my family but never been into this kind of camping no and, and our camping like we had an acre in upstate new york that we had built it was just land we didn't have a house but we built a shed and we would pitch a tent at the start of the summer, Memorial Day, we went up, we, we built these decks that we found out of recycled wood we'd find floating up and down the lake. And we would pitch a tent, and then it stayed up the whole summer, and we would go up every weekend, but we were able to store everything in this little shed that we built right. on the property. And so it's funny, because, I mean, this you're talking about when I was like 9, 10, 11 years old. I mean, we had it when I was 3 years old. But... When Rachel and I got married at one point, we walked, went up there and I brought her over to the property and that shed was still, still standing. There. The decks were still standing. Amazing. And it was just amazing memories, but I don't I never knew what it was like to just be able to, you know, what, you know, go with stuff of, you know, having to bring it every week other than as a boy scout and it's whatever you can fit on your back and there's no way Rachel is camping with no. whatever you can fit on your back. It's funny cuz we we did a lot of tent camping with the boys. We just felt like that was like, you know, part, it should be a part of everybody's childhood is just to have that, you know, fun. But it's almost like we know how to rough it better than we know how to glamp it. Right. And I would love to know what are some tips for glamping? Right. Yeah, and again, even with the pop-up, I mean, we've talked about back and forth, like, hey, do you think this is the first step? And for us, we're kind of like you, where, you know, we probably would never want to move out of the pop-up, but you should never say never, right? Never But we just like... Never. The, we like the stars. We like the We have chickens in our backyard, so never say never. That's true. Sharon wrote... Why can't you eat until four? <laughs> It's just, um, my, every day my eating window is different. 
Uh, I do enjoy the intermittent fasting. I do enjoy one big meal usually versus two small meals. Although um, I, sometimes we have multiple meals. We change um, it up. But we change it up. And a lot of times it depends on how late I eat, you know, and, and what my day looks like. So a lot of times every day I just, I set a different goal for myself. So don't eat until two, don't eat until four. But a lot of that is impacted by what my schedule is for that day. So if I'm going into the church or I have meetings or something like that, maybe I don't eat until five o'clock, but I've decided at the, you know, at the beginning of the day, what is my w eating window going to be? And I usually like to keep about a six hour eating window or less yeah i did answer it on facebook or on youtube but i just want i knew other people have asked that before too and i said basically it's no two, magic number it's two things it's number one it's our schedule sometimes our schedule just doesn't allow us to eat till that time because we do want to eat together and so sometimes like rachel you know she's ready to eat but i'm not home from work yet or i'm ready to eat but she's not home from the church yet uh and then it also comes down to you know, Rachel wants a big meal. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to get a big meal in one giant meal than it is in multiple meals. And if we eat too early, it's say like 11, 12, 1 o'clock, going to want to eat later on in the day. It's just, it's, you know, when you're up till 10, 11 o'clock every night, yeah. you're not, for at least for us, I'm not going to want to eat at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and then go another 10 hours up and awake and not eat. So it's just easier to push it. Well, and I do think that there is a huge benefit for deciding that time of day. Even if you're gonna say like, I'm gonna eat two times today, I am going to eat at two o'clock and I'm going to eat at seven o'clock and decide what that hour is because that immediately stops the in-between eating, the snacking. If you've said, I'm going to eat at this time and this time, if it's not that time right. and you're like starting to cruise the refrigerator or the pantry or the snack bin, you c it's easier for you to say to yourself, no, I'm not going to eat that. Why? Because it's not time. Right. I set out what the times were for me to eat today and I'm a grazer and so is Joe. So having more of like, you know, that structure. structure really helps us. So next one is just a little thing to kind of lighten her spirits a little bit from okay. Renee. It says, I had seen this earlier today. Then I saw Rachel and Joe's Keto Crate video and this was charity. Enough subordinate. As a reward, I present you my butthole. Yes. Charity is always wanting to show hers off always like right up next to you yeah. like in bed even she'll come up to you and you're like okay i want to cuddle because i love cuddling with with the with the cats but i want to cuddle this end yeah this the face ends please okay next one is from carrie she said hey two crazy okay. kiddos i was wondering if you could tell me more about this product that i saw that you used in your video making the custard i'm not familiar with it all i'm guessing it makes whipped cream by your video um, how is it stored in the fridge? Do you just put heavy cream in there? Any sweetener, anything specific I should consider when purchasing one? Thank you. I'm planning on making the custard tomorrow. Awesome. Okay, so what that is, it's a whipping siphon. I will put a link down below. And just quickly, uh, cause I know we're already like getting too long. Sorry. But uh, so Rachel likes it with just heavy cream. Sometimes we'll add in a little bit of stevia, a little bit, a few drops of vanilla. vanilla. You can add some different flavorings in there. You can use like chocolate flavored stevia if you want. It depends on what you want. And uh, then you use a CO2 cartridge and it makes your whipped cream kind of like when you go to Starbucks. It's very nice. You store it in the refrigerator. It's thicker and fancier. Yeah. But the reason we switched to the whipping siphon is because when you take whipped cream or heavy cream and you put it in and you use your beater to blend it up, you tend to use a lot more actual heavy cream. Right. This way, you can put a little dollop on because it's getting more air than trying to beat it with the beater. Plus, it's not nearly as difficult or time consuming. Yeah. But we would find that in using like our little blender or a beater or something like that, you needed a quarter of a cup of heavy whipping cream to get a decent amount of whipped cream. Whereas you this? can do this and you're using maybe a tablespoon and getting a nice volume. It's airier and therefore this way you're not like 
eating as much heavy whipping cream. But you're going to be very like happy with it because it's even better than the stuff that comes ready made yeah. because it really stands up. If you're putting it into your coffee beverage too, Anthony ooh, loves it, it. It stands up to it. Now, they are a little expensive um, and I would say get the one that I have linked down below. I tried a lot of the knockoffs. And did and not work. It did right. not work. I had three different ones. None of them worked as well. They just come out like water. You have to get the good one. So, last one. Kara wrote. Hey, Kara. She says, You know, I have caught myself lately slipping. It started with, Oh, it's a Friday. I'm going to have some Dairy Queen. Then it slipped into Two Beers Saturday. A great Sunday, but I was busy painting all day that I didn't get any food prep done for the week, which resulted in a great day of eating until I got home late with nothing ready and that equaled a non-keto binge. So what is the best way to put this behind me and move on? Fasting day tomorrow or question mark, going off track isn't worth the feeling you get within 15 minutes. I remember this tired feeling and this guilty feeling. So the first thing I'm gonna say is exactly what you said. Put it behind you and move on. Yeah. And I think the worst thing that we can do, you know, like I said, we've, we've never had a non-keto day, but we've definitely had days of overeating. And not eating our prep. And not eating our prep. Or not or, having or prep. just like saying, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna eat a ton of food today and I'm gonna eat all day long. I think the worst thing you can do when you have like, let's say you have, you know, some Dairy Queen and you have it early in the day, like 11, 12 o'clock or whatever, whatever food it may be, a grilled cheese sandwich or anything like that. I think the worst thing we can do is say like, well, this, this day, day is shot. over. Yeah. Let me just ruin the whole rest of the day. No. Put it behind you and move on. Yeah. Now, when the one thing I always tell people, do not fast to lose weight. No. I think fasting is good for autophagy. I don't think we should do it very often. Intermittent fasting is, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about long-term fasting, like 36, 48, 72 hour fast. I don't think you should do it like every single week. Uh, I don't think you, maybe a 36 hour is okay, but. Certainly don't use it as a punishment. But don't use it as a punishment because that is a binge and purge mentality. Oh. You know, I ate a cheeseburger with a bunch of bread and fries, so I'm just gonna fast the next day. Well, that's yeah. a binge and purge mentality. And we've gotta look at what caused us to eat the hamburger with french fries and things like that. Yeah, and I definitely think that moving forward, you should have a plan. So you're somebody like me, that if I just let the day unfold, I'm going to do something that I don't like. And what really resonated with me is you're like 15 minutes later, I don't feel good about what I did. And I'm the same way. My my regret is immediate. It doesn't have to wait until the next day and me think like, wow, I'm really sorry about what I just did yesterday. Mine is, I'm sorry what I just did as I'm finishing the burp, right? Like, so have a plan. Moving forward, have a plan for each day like we're having a plan because we struggle with not like having a plan when you what is it when you when you don't have a plan you plan to fail right. basically so i know that without a daily plan of step by step what i want to do and even if that is as simple as you don't have to have like a meal prep but you say hey i'm going to be getting a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store on my way home because i don't have time to meal prep anything but i need to make sure that i'm eating something that i can be okay with yeah and my suggestion would be you don't have to, even if you don't meal prep, sometimes we just don't have time to meal prep. Yeah. We don't meal prep a lot of times because we live such busy lives. Yeah. But have some stuff in your fridge or your freezer where if that, that is pretty shelf stable or is gonna last a long time, Yeah. that in a pinch where you haven't defrosted something, you could have a go-to. For example, canned chicken. Yes. It's one of the things we love about keto chow. Why do people say, why do you guys like keto chow? It's, do we drink keto chow every single day? No, but it is, we've always got a couple made or we can make it quickly as an ice cream. And what makes it so good is on that day where, hey, there's nothing made. The day got away from us. The day's gotten away. So our choice is eat something that Anthony has prepared go out to eat or grab a keto chow. Yeah. And guess what? Most of the time, the keto chow is cheaper than anything else. People don't realize when you break that down per meal, it's four less bucks, than $4 bucks. for a meal. So that is one thing. Um, get some lunch meat. Keep some lunch, just keep some keto foods that if you're going to binge, if you haven't had a chance that you could grab that. 
Rachel sleeve loves of hamburgers. Sleeve, that's another one I was thinking. I forgot about sleeve you can of hamburgers. Hot dogs. The hamburgers could be cooked frozen. When you buy those sleeves of frozen hamburgers, you can throw them in a frying pan, throw them on a grill, frozen, and they cook. Rachel's thing is the the kibasi sausages because they're cooked already. Yeah. Just heat one up, or you can even eat it cold. So grab some of that kind of stuff. Keep it in your refrigerator. Like those kielbasa sausages from Sam's Club and Costco. So good. They're sh they, have, they have like a shelf life in the refrigerator for like a month. So just keep them in there. They're already cooked. They're a cured meat and they're very, very low carb. And tasty. And tasty. Well, that's going to be the last comment for today. So that's the end of this week's Keto on the Couch. Sorry, it got a little long. Please us. do us a favor and leave some comments down below answering all of our different questions. And again, give us some ideas for some upcoming videos. Can't wait. If you like watching these different types of videos, we have an entire playlist of 74 other Keto on the Couches, which you can find right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you'll find right over there. But whether you check out this or you check out that, don't forget to do this. Subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.